Hi all, today is August 9th. This is the KCP community meeting. If you've got any topics, please feel free to add them to this agenda in GitHub. And uh, as always, we skip over and leave till the end, triaging new issues and looking at the milestone status. So um, I have added a question here on uh, maybe we should rename or consider renaming the Slack channel. It's currently KCP-Prototype. And I think we've moved, hopefully, beyond the prototype stage. So um, uh, if, if folks are not against it, then I think we can try and get some ideas for what we'd like the channel to be called, either just KCP if that's available, or KCP-Dev or something like that. So uh, anybody have any thoughts on that? Plus one for me to remove prototype. KCP or KCP dev sounds fine. Kubernetes is Kubernetes contributors, though, right? Well, there, uh, there's uh, yeah, there's Kubernetes contributors. Uh, there's Kubernetes users looking at. Like I used to be active in the Valero community. There's Valero dev and Valero users. Um, I'd be cool with KCP dev just because we're probably going to cover a variety of things. And if we have, like, we do have multiple repos that are under our KCP dev umbrella. So some ideas. KCP dev, just KCP. Um, I see people saying plus one to KCP dev in the channel, so or in the Google chat. So I think um, we'll go with KCP dev unless there's any significant objections that come up. Um, and I can look into how we get that renamed. OK, um, I'm going to move on. And Lukash, you've got uh, the next item on here. Yeah, just a small announcement that uh, the E2E sharded CI job uh, runs all E2E tests against a multi shard environment. So that means you need to prepare your future controllers and tests uh, for that, but only if you deal with you know multiple controllers. Uh, sorry, shards. Uh, and also, there's an easy way to run an environment like that on your local machine. You can use sharded test server binary with a flag. Um, it will create a front proxy, the root shard, and additional shard. Um, and then you can ra run the test against uh, that environment. Also, keep in mind that you know not everything works because you know sharding is still work in progress. So if something uh, doesn't work, feel free to, to ping me. And that's that's all. Thanks. Anybody have any questions or Just comments? One, one addition, um, one comment. The workspace controller schedules to root shard. That is correct, Validity. yes. You have to opt out of that. Just to, I mean, it, it works, but everything lands on root at the moment. Uh, yes. But you you are completely, to... yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you have to specify essentially uh, the shard name during scheduling, I think, yeah. And also, uh, like authorization I know is broken. So if you would like to uh, talk to the shard, essentially you would have to use system masters group. Uh, I think you could use shard admin token. And then the stack is simply skipped, so you can talk to the shard. OK. Um, Steve, you had some comments in chat. Do you want to say them? Sure. Um, I think there's going to be a fairly large amount of churn in controllers as we move from assuming one virtual workspace to one per shard. And then on top of that, from assuming one set of client, or sorry, one set of informers to two, um, we might want to think about 
are we going to use a higher level abstraction for controllers in our core? If we are, this might be a good time to do it. I imagine that'll probably fall under the R&D effort that Lukash is going to be working on. Yeah, we are slowly starting to rewrite controllers, which means we start simple. We learn one of few examples. And when we know we need an abstraction and we know how it should look like, we will certainly add that. But this is part of the learning. I mean, take a couple of controllers, a handful, and just see what we need. That's our Certainly. Plan. I think there's potentially some argument to be made as well that instead of doing it on our handcrafted ones, if we choose one simple controller to do with controller runtime, we can also start dogfooding there. Oh, yes, we should. I mean, let's say, I mean, wait a couple of weeks. We talk again in I don't know, three weeks, four weeks, and I bet we will be at the point where we talk about controller runtime and how this will look like. Sure. Yeah. If yeah, if that comes before we move all of our stuff over, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, I pasted an example. Um, if you want to experiment with multi shard, this new organization fixture there, this would give you a, a workspace on the second chart. If you don't do that, like you don't have the shard constraint at the end, you're on the route. Okay. Uh, anything else on the sharding topic? Okay. Um, I have one which I need to add, which is that last Friday uh, we released 0 0.7. We don't have release notes for it yet, but it is tagged. And um, there's a whole bunch of changes that have come in. Um, I think we'll get the release notes up, and then folks can take a look. But uh, we have uh, got a lot of work from a lot of contributors. So thank you, everybody, for your hard work on that. And um, if you haven't had a chance to play around with either 07 or main lately, I think you'll find a lot of stuff that's pretty cool that's been going on lately. Uh, any comments, Stefan, or anybody on the 07 release? I know I was pretty vague on <laughs> what's in there. Do we need to recap the zero seven one? I think we've got both PRs merged for that already, and we're we're good on what we want to back or what we want to patch in. Um. So we let's see issues milestones. Um. Uh, there's this refactoring of permission claims, reconciling or labeling that Sean was working on, and I'm helping him out with. Um, we could tag with what we have now, or we could wait. I don't think it, I mean, we could do a 071 and then a 072, uh, doesn't really matter. I, I don't think this blocks anybody. It's refactor in the background. We are nearly yeah. there, but let's merge it when it's ready. And that's, let's tag 07 now, whatever we want. 071, now. okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We can do that. Um, all right. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll get 071 out, and uh, Sean's can go into 072. OK. Uh, anybody have any topics before we go into issue triage and epic review? No. All right. Well, if you think of anything, Please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, we've got nine issues here. I'll go top down. So um, this one can be TBD, or we can give it a, a milestone if we feel like it. I would give it to the next one. It's not critical for the 07, but it's part of what we should do for games. Works for me. Uh, oh, right. So this one, I encountered this in a prowl run, didn't have enough logging to figure out why it failed. I have since added 
a PR with more logging. So if you all happen to be working on pull requests and you see a failure that looks like this, come on, Prowl. Um, so if you see test user home workspaces, create a workspace in the non-existing home and have it created automatically in workspace request. If you see it fail where it's trying to create a workspace, workspace one, and it gets a not found trying to create the cluster workspace, please let me know or please add a comment to this issue with a link to the, uh, the Prowl job because it doesn't happen all that often, but I think there's a bug lingering in there somewhere. So if you run into that, please let us know. But by the way, does anyone know if there's an easy way uh, of you know searching through our CI? Like imagine I would like to see or you know find a specific error across many, many runs. Yeah, we don't have it hooked into the BigQuery uh infrastructure that kubernetes is in uh, for the job failures we are in test grid so if you go to test grid and you just look for kcp um, you will see that we have um unit tests edes and ed multiple runs these are all from pull requests uh, we are running periodics, but I haven't added them to test grid yet. So, you know, you can come in and look and you can ask it for uh, excluding non-failed tests. And you'll, I don't know, sometimes you see, I guess, yeah, there's a smattering of tests that have failed here and there. And so you can go look at any individual one when it fails. But in terms of your specific question, I'm not aware of a way to do that. Um, and if you want to look at the periodics, we do have them pinned in our Slack channel um, under periodics or under the CI folder. And you can see we're running um, all of these every, or E to E and E to E multiple runs every two hours. And I think they're generally good. Um, and Steve, you wrote, we might be able to get search.ci to index ours. Um, is that search.ci.cates.io? Why don't we um, maybe file an issue and we can get somebody to look into it? Yeah, I also don't remember what the uh, criteria are to get into the BigQuery data set. Uh, OK, thank you. So I added an issue about enabling audit logging for E2E -E launched KCP servers. But before we talk about this, um, Stefan and Steve, I know that the two of you were talking about how to proceed with our e to e server setup and you all were talking about having some that were run in process and some that were shared is this still relevant after your discussion because this applies to in process uh kcp instances or ones at least that are launched by ete, e -E, uh, e -E, so shared one. we talked about so we will need a kcp start end-to-end -end run in some way. One is probably enough. We don't need end-to-end -end plus multiple runs end-to-end, -end, so we can consolidate. But we need one. But we can and also, you're talking sorry, I don't think we need the KCP server per test case situation, right? We can always have a shared. Well, so and we right now yeah. we have per, so we have certain test cases need a standalone KCP that they can muck around with and that would break other test cases. That's like very few. And then we have shared, which by default, unless you tell it otherwise, it's a new, newly launched KCP instance per package. So it's shared mm -hmm. by all the tests in a package, 
but if you are testing 10 packages, you're going to get 10 different. Why not just one? Because of the way that the. Wait, do you talk about shared? Shared is outside of. of no, no, no. I'm talking. So when you do, when you use the framework and you ask for a shared. KCP server. Oh, I see. I see. If uh, you don't specify use default KCP server, then it will launch, I believe, one per package. Sure. Sorry. I think I, I misunderstood. And that makes sense because each package is running separate processes. Yes. Um, so this think, is this is for the per package or any right. any I think that can go. I mean, we can we can probably still add it for local dev if you want it. Um, but I imagine yeah. In CI, we will have a single KCP, either started with KCP start or something more. Or sorry, there's two cases: one with KCP start, then one with the sharded setup. But in any which case, means, I think we yeah, move to shared. a situation where we have just one. Which means those two, which we run on GitHub, basically we need right, and the other two we drop. Mm -hmm. um, but it, if we preserve this code, or sorry. If we preserve the ability to run KCP from an E2E -E test, which we at yeah. least need for the um, destructive ones, the destructive ones, I think it would be useful to get the auto logs because <laughs> they're not there. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, just if you have time, just do it. Yeah, I mean, just copy what, what we have there, right? It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And if folks are interested in helping out, this would be great. Um, navigation issue with the use. Um, oh, this this was the one around. Yes. Didn't we fix this? Uh, well, in, in fact, um, I don't think you know the, the issue was mainly explaining how to how it currently works. I don't think there is additional uh, right, so fixes for that. David, can you? Test this on main, and if it's not a problem, close it out. Yeah, yeah this is already uh, the case on main. I mean, you okay? Well, you just have to add the the get um, permission. Uh, which, so, uh, uh, over to you to close it out then. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Well, uh, I think it was more of a question of like the UX on it, right? Yes, it, it was mainly just related to the transition be, be, between the previous way of doing things and the and the new one. Okay. So, and and probably a lack of communication on, uh, on that. But like th this has been so. Th this is, you know, this is related to the fact that um, you need to have the get. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you need just you just need to have the get permission in any case because it's it has been already some time that that it it is implemented like that or also if you look uh, in the end to end tests but we never communicated on that and since we switched to home workspaces I mean I mean a sort of you know fuzzy uh, area uh, was there uh, since you know the last the last release so I, it's mainly a question of of making it clear. But to be clear. Um, it's still broken if you give somebody access without get permissions, correct? Well, it's it's not really broken. It's the fact that the get permission is mainly the symptom that you are the owner uh, of this workspace, that you can see this workspace. Yeah, yeah but list, so. if, if somebody does sharing manually, um, he has to give those two permissions. Yes. Which is fine. I mean, if you say that. Yeah. That's yeah a helper for sharing on the CLA? Say again. Do we have a helper for sharing on the CLA? No, we 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 intend to do that someday, but we haven't. But, but I would maybe close this out with a link to an issue where we improve the UX because remembering three different RBAC is not going to be an easy one. Sure. It's I mean that that's that was the 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 idea of the issue uh, previously, just to make it clear. I mean, make the, the answer clear and and track this question, but obviously related to you know sharing UX, the, the preliminary task was really to come back to a row or you know standard airbag first, and then it's much easier to build a UX layer on top of that. 
Okay, uh, so are we going to create an issue saying we need a share helper in the plugin? Yes, I mean, there has been several issues for sharing already, but since we had back and forth <laughs> thoughts on sharing, I'm not sure one is still open. We can open a new one if we want. Let's find out. Thirteen nineteen. Okay. Uh, the remaining work to Apparently, there's no way to check if a cluster has been drained and the workloads moved. So let's see, what do we do here? Add a sync target, create a deployment, get it synced, drain the. I think, I think it's a weighted request. But I mean, it's an enhancement. Basically, it's a feature. Yes, we want something like that, probably. So it's it's around capacity and um, allocated resources, these kind of things. I think. Tsunga could reflect the number of namespaces on the status, for example. Okay. Uh, after a sync target is drained, it still shows the deployment is running. Add a sync target, create a deployment, get it synced, drain it, get the deployment from KCP, and it says it's all good. Um, I think I'm just going to whoops, put... If I remember right, this was connected to the previous one. So you have to wait until draining is finished, which you don't really know. But if you stop too early, then there's still stuff on the cluster. Yeah, I'm going to. Um... I help wanted on this one. I think this definitely has to do with syncing from downstream back to upstream. I thought we, like, if the resource downstream has been deleted, do we not update the status upstream? Um, Joachim or David, could I think you all were in this code recently. Is this something you could look into? I think this is the case. I think you're right. Like when the label is gone, there's still replicas, one maybe inside. Good work. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we should um, schedule this. So, um, you know, it's. I put TBD. Yeah, it's, I, I think, think it's, it's connected. It's connected, David, to our discussion about coordination controllers for every workload. Yeah. And if it's mm -hmm. not scheduled, there cannot be replicas one, something like that. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, th there is nothing updating the status once it's gone. So that's why you can still see everything running. So we have a plan for that, and yeah, we'll come to that. OK. Um, this one, another sync target. This is create a sync target, create a deployment, get it synced, add another sync target, delete the first one, get it to move, add it. Oh, I guess the label's still there. No, well, it's 
it's a little bit tricky as you create, for example, a sync target uh, called cluster one. This then, is the UID thing, right? Well, yeah, you remove the cluster one and recreate the cluster one. Yeah. And the previous running syncer will keep running, but uh, things will get a little bit weird as it's using a different sync target UID. So this should be fixed as uh, we merge. 16.87? Yeah. OK. Um, just in, in the future, when you do a PR uh, to fix an issue, you can always yeah. put fixes. Fixes, and that's it. Yeah, sorry. one was mine related to running too many uh, KCP instances in parallel. I think this relates to the earlier discussion. Um, so Steve, can I, like, are you going to run point on the various E to E's? And would this fall under your work on that? Or are you not planning on doing that? And we need somebody else for it. I can I can do that in the background, yeah. Okay. And at the very least, we could just change dash p three down to dash p one before doing anything else. And watch our uh, runtime increase. I mean, it might stay about the same, or it might actually go down. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we were investigating the resource usage of these things, and that test takes five vCPUs for 30 minutes, as it is. It's pretty amazing. Multiple runs? Uh, both of them. Yeah. Well, when you're not running a shared etcd and a shared KCP, you've got a lot of stuff going on, right? All right. Um, this one I'm going to assign myself since I'm working on it. All righty. Uh, that is all of those. So let's just do a quick milestone check in on the epics. Um, I don't think Mike is here. Has anybody? Stevan or anyone heard on if Mike has done anything on card in fairness? No. The last message was there's a colleague who wants to look into it, but this is like four weeks ago. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. Um, sharding is, I'm assuming, still in progress. Any, and I know Lukash had his update earlier. Um, any yeah, we, we, specific updates? We just try to scope a little, but it's pretty open. And we had a good meeting today, so we make progress. OK. Um, are, do you all need to make any changes to any of this uh, that's in here? I, I think we, we will make changes on the way. OK. Sounds so good. it's not set in stone, but it's written there. Uh, so API export permissions on binding, as I mentioned earlier, I'm helping out here. So Sean uh, was working on the refactoring of the controller. I'm helping him out with that. Um, looks like we've got some other stuff before we're MVP complete. So um, I guess we'll have to see if we think those will fit into 0 08 or not. Yeah, we should have a chat about priority. So MVP is really no new feature, just fixing things we know, like authorization. And then we have a couple of things below, so we have to balance both, maybe. Yeah. All right. Um, cluster workspace type take two. I think the, I know we had um, this API binding initializer work that um, Steve, you had started. Uh, I think Stefan and I were talking when you were on vacation about possibly adding bindings to the cluster workspace type spec instead of having a new like API set type. 
Um, yeah, we have, we don't have to talk about the details here. We should come yeah. back. I think we want a solution. We all know that. Uh, so Maybe yeah, move, I mean, it, move it to the next. So I'm not sure. Come to that in zero eight. Okay. If we decide between sharding and this one, I think sharding is has higher priority. At least the first steps. All right, I'm going to put it in nine for right now. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's. We just need to make a decision on what we want the current yeah. set of bootstrap controllers to do. Yeah, we can set up a separate time to chat. Uh, user homework spaces, what's left? Some sh uh, so I updated the Epic just today. So normally everything is there. Maybe yeah, I just starting and CLI. Yeah, so that that were uh, that was in the nice to have or stretch goals that we put that initially. I just left it for you know history, but sharding integration obviously it's something we will have to think about um, uh, when doing the front proxy. But I, it's, it's, it's that's sorry. done by the way. <laughs> the sorry? index is done. The index is done. If this is the content of the open issue there. Sharding integration. Yeah, well, it's it's not uh, also a hard, uh, hard requirement in the sense that, if I remember correctly, what we did uh, can work on any shard. I mean, if it's not not even the the, the if it's not the right shard, then it would be reforwarded to the external client to the with the front proxy, uh, you know. Uh, address and finally end up um yeah with the workspace home workspace be, being created at the right place so, so we I believe mean, it works right yes but mainly what we have is include home workspaces i mean heavily and and you know clearly into the sharding uh, the, yeah the but i would have to test and validate uh, i would remove that for the moment we come to the, those topics when we have two full shards and be randomly scheduled. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, it was here only initially for, you know, for. So I'm tempted to close right. this out. I think there's I think work. can be, yes. The, maybe the only thing is at the very end, you have doc and demo. And I'm not sure there was uh, a demo really start somewhere, you know. Uh, I, I'm not worried about demos for right now. Like, I think so, when. Yeah. When we are ready to come back to demos, we will. And yeah, sure. yeah. hopefully, we'll have fantastic demos, fantastic docs. We'll post all over the place on social media. But uh, I don't think we're there right now. Yeah. So, so I mean, th that was, I think, the only thing we, we could say is not you know, down, but the rest is, is done and working. So I'm going to edit this and. Yeah, and the CLI plugin to enable sharing, you know, it's now mainly uh, probably superseded by the by the issue we created. You know, sharing is is a wider uh, yep. question, and... be it in home workspaces or in org workspaces. Right, so this is done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for all the work on that, David. I'm so much happier that we have <laughs> home workspaces now. Yeah. All right, quota. This one has mostly been mine. Um, so we have per workspace quota support for namespace, normal, and bound we do not yet have cluster scope resources but i am i have a proof pr working on that um, that works that works that works that works so there is still some work left to do um, if anyone is interested in helping out with quota uh, please let me know um, but at least in 0 0.7 we do have um, the sort of standard 
Kubernetes resource quota that you'd expect per namespace. Uh, we do not have, um, it's only object count quota for right now. So if you're trying to quota CPU, memory, node port services, that's not implemented yet. I will come back in and add that. All right, multi-workspace controller development. I think most of this is uh, around the work that um, Fabian is finishing up on the informers and listers that are uh, that we can generate that'll be multi-cluster aware. So, Fabian, I see you here. Any updates? Um, I, I know we've been in contact, but just at a high level, um, what's left to do? Um, yeah, I think with the stuff that Steve uh, helped with yesterday, we're now generating upstream interface compatible um, informers and listers for everything. So it's just kind of a matter of starting to plumb them through everything else, which I'm going to get to this afternoon. And uh, hopefully there won't be any any more bugs uncovered. Okay, awesome. And, and as part of that work, um, along with what Varsha has been doing, uh, we will eventually undo our changes to the client generator and the um, informer generator that we made to our Kubernetes fork and switch anybody who's not using controller runtime over to a new code generator that we've written that generates uh, informers and listers that are multi workspace aware. And we already have a new way that doesn't require any code gen to take a client and make it multi-workspace aware. So we have a lot of docs that we need to do, but um, we've made a lot of progress. So thank you to, to you all for all that hard work. OK, um, this one, Stefan, location workspace is basically right at this point. Yeah, there's some work merged, but it's still not complete. Georgian is on PTO at the moment, so we have to wait. OK. Thank you. And then the last one is logs, exec, et cetera. Uh, I haven't heard from Antonio in a while. Do we? Uh, have you talked to him, Stefan? Yeah, we had a meeting like 10 days ago or so. So he's on the right track. I'm not sure. There was a cube freeze, I think, last week. So that made him busy. I have to be sync with him. OK. All right. Um, we've got 20 minutes left. If anybody's got anything you want to chat about, Okay, well, thanks everybody. It's good to see you as always. Uh, see you next time. Bye.